Good morning all. So we thought we'd do another video for you today. This is one that we've been asked for by a lot of you to show you how to do it. It's a lot more simple than you think it's going to be. Um, this is actually a card similar to a card that we have up on our demonstration board at the shows that we all attend. And you'll find this a similar version of this on our gallery. Um, it's just really to show you the technique on how to do this rather than um, give you a whole big um, technique session. It's just literally this one card that everyone's been asking us about. Um, it looks a lot more difficult than it is. It's probably got a really posh official name of what it, type of card it's called. Um, I just call it the laid frame card, but it could be something completely different. So the products we're going to use today are our Blooming Flourish stamp, uh, Butterfly Wishes stamp set. Now this has lots of different sentiments on it. Um, and it says, uh, flutter by with best wishes. Today would be a lovely day to be a butterfly. Those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day. Uh, butterfly kisses and birthday wishes and social butterfly. And we've also then just got a little butterfly in here as well. Uh, so they're the two sets that we're going to use today. So butter Blooming Flourishes is one big stamp. Sort of, it's um, roughly four, uh, six by four. So that will give you six by four inches, sorry. That will give you an idea of what it is. We're also obviously going to be using our Honeydew Craft Sticky Glue. We do that in the two sizes. We've got the 120 mil and we have the 30 mil. We're also going to use the Honeydew Craft Crystal Clear Embossing Powder. We're going to use Versafine Onyx Black. And the three colours we're using for oxides today are Peacock Feathers, Scattered Straw and Shabby Shutter. Um, so we will get started. Look if I can take there we go. So uh, see look, I'm getting used to this system now. So I'm just gonna pop these off to one side so we can get going. So we are starting off with uh, an eight by eight card as normal. We have a piece of black cardstock. Now the cardstock is really quite close to the size of the card. Um, this one is a seven and five eighths inch square purely because the next size down I'm using and I need it, I like to have just that little black border around the edge because it gives you a bit of a pop, um, is seven and a half. So this is just literally one eighth bigger. And we'll pop those two to one side and just keep our white square here. We're gonna take our Blooming Flourishes stamp and the Versafine Black Onyx. Let me just pop these out of the way. Versafine Black Onyx. So I'm going to do lots and lots and lots of little light taps. I always lay my stamp down on the hard surface and work from that rather than taking my stamp to the ink. You'll get a much, much better coverage and you'll get a more even coverage if you leave it flat on your work surface rather than hold it in your hand and try and do it that way. So lots and lots of little light taps. And then when we stamp this card down, we're going to go really quite close to the bottom right hand corner, left hand corner. I don't know my right from my left, look. bottom left hand corner. Pop that down. It's a big stamp, so make sure you give it lots of pressure. But you can do this with any stamps. I think this would be quite nice with a Christmas stamp. So watch this space, there might be another one coming your way. But give it plenty of pressure. And then we're going to lift that off. Then you need to get your crystal clear embossing powder on your card as quickly as you can if you're using this particular ink because it doesn't particularly like um, embossing powder, the Versafine, but if you're nice to it, that will do it for you. And then you're going to take your excess off. Don't be tempted to go in and give that a really big flick like you normally would. Just a light little tap will take the excess off for you for that. Put the powder back in the pot and get that pot out of the way for you. When I'm heating this one um, with the crystal clear, I do tend to heat from underneath, purely because it stops the power of the heat, of the heat tool blowing the powder off. As I say, they don't particularly like to talk to each other, these two, so um, you have to be quite delicate with it. If you haven't, if you're not confident enough to heat from underneath, make sure you use it on the lower heat if you've got a dual tone on the top. So bear with me, it's going to take a couple of minutes to just cook this. 
get your heat gun as hot as you can that you can go straight on there and it will help to maybe not for your car not to um, walk too much with the heat. And as you can see as you go along, the heat changes the powder. And that powder becomes a solid and gives you the raised finish. Close. There we go. So now, hopefully, we'll be able to catch the light on this and be able to show you. There we go. Just the shiny black finish we have. Now, while that's still warm, just give it a little bit of a curl to get it as flat again as you can. And then we're going to take our paint brushes and I'm going to paint this with peacock feathers. I love this colour. I don't ever use it enough. But there we go. And every time I go for a colour, it's always my next favourite. So pick up a little bit of the colour with some water. I do tend to load my brush up quite a lot with what's, what I've put down there because I'm a bit lazy and don't want to keep going back for more. And then I'm just going to take some of the excess water off here because I don't want huge amounts of water on. I just want the colour to transfer as much as possible. Still a little bit. And as I say in all my videos, I break every rule there is. I'm probably not supposed to do this. This is not a special watercolour card. It's just um, a plain, super smooth white cardstock. People think that this particular card how do you manage to get everything lined up is the biggest question we get asked at the workshops how do you get everything lined up or at the shows so hopefully this will make it all as clear as clear rather than as clear as mud when I'm trying to explain it to people at shows they just look at me like I've said something completely foreign to them which I promise I haven't and then hopefully this will make it all come clear and if anybody knows what the, what the proper name for this card is please let us know I'm sure there's a, a f official name for it. A few of our people, ladies that come to our workshops have done this card at workshops as well. And they can't believe how easy it is to do. So I'm not just saying that, it really is super, super easy to do. Grab a little bit more colour there. And a tiny amount of water goes a really long way as you can see. We don't want it too wet. It's not the most interesting thing in the world watching me paint. And I'm not, I would probably take a little bit longer at this if I was doing this at home without trying to do a video. But I don't want our video to be too long. So hopefully this will work just what you need. Now if I wanted those to be a little bit darker, this is where I tell you I break all the rules. I really shouldn't do what I'm about to do, but I'm going to because it's where I want it to be. Um, I always miss this flower. I don't know why, but whenever I'm colouring I always have to go back to that flower. I just obviously just don't see it. I have a little corner on my ink pad you can probably see here. It's where I just go in with my brush, which is what I shouldn't probably do, but I do and then it will give me a slightly darker colour without adding too much more water to my, well, I haven't added any water to my brush. I do tend to go for the same corner so that I don't trash the whole ink pad, um, which again is probably wrong, but it works for me. I just want these bigger ones to be slightly darker down here. And again, it doesn't have to be beautiful. If you just want the centre to be darker, 
just go in with a little bit on the center and the nice thing about having embossed it previously is you can paint scribble all the way over the top and it won't affect your embossing it won't tell you your outline down and I'm trying really hard to speak a lot louder than I normally would as well because I've had a few people struggling with the volume if you're struggling to hear me um, you've got two different ways of turning up the volume if you're on a computer you can do it um, through the YouTube channel or you can do it um, on the right hand side of your computer there's a volume for your speakers as well that will help you turn the volume up if you're just on a tablet of some sort you can again do it through the video and then or you can um, do it on the side of your tablet both would work so see on this one I just literally I don't want it to be too perfect of a circle all the way around there which it could easily have fallen into there just to give it a little bit of a difference and then I'm going to go in with shabby shutter as I say this this bit isn't the most interesting but the next where are we? Okay. I'm trying to do this as quickly as we can And it's not shabby shutter at all, it's scattered straw. I'm telling you all wrong. So I've got some scattered straw there. Now it's shabby shutter. Again, just pick it up. And this is just going to go in and just do the leaves here really, really quickly now. So if you're at home, spend a little bit longer doing this bit than I've just done. It'll be nicer. And you need to enjoy what you're doing when you're painting it. It's a bit of a switch off. I sometimes have to remember that I have to talk to people when I'm doing this at shows. I go into my own little world, think about anything and everything and not do what I'm supposed to be doing. So just colour those centres in as well. So that's your image stamped out and coloured in. Going to quickly wipe the excess of this away because it will spread a long way when you don't want it to. Give that a quick dry. So that's all our image stamped out and embossed and coloured in. I'm then going to take my square dies. Now you can do this with any dies that you have, um, but you need to do a frame. So if you want to do circles, squares, rectangles, octagons, whatever you want. And I just pop a little bit of tape on there. And then you're going to put, pop the next one in the middle. Now, depending on what tape you're using, don't go use too much of it. And particularly when you're putting it over your image, you can always stick a butterfly if it rips the paper further up, but you can't repay, replace it over your image. So I do tend to leave the pieces on there that I've had from previous times because although they're not super, super sticky, they'll hold it just long enough to run it through the machine. Now, I'm not going to run this through the die cut machine, but that's all you would do. You would do that and run it through a die cut machine. And hopefully, you'll end up with something that looks like this. So you'll have three layers of cardstock, and your image will be on all three layers. That's one thing you need to remember when you're lining it up with your image when you line your stencil up with your image that you manage to get a little bit of each of, of the design on each corner so you'll end up with three pieces i've then stamped and embossed a sentiment on here don't do it before because you don't know where it's going to be as far as your framework goes so don't stamp and emboss it beforehand do that afterwards so i've used today would be a lovely day to be a butterfly um and then I'm going to start layering up our card. This is how quick it is. Look, we're 14 minutes in. So we'll just take our sticky glue, lay our black cardstock down. Pop that on there. And the sticky glue gives you a couple of minutes, seconds wiggle room, so it's always quite handy. 
So we've had stamped out one image and we've only had to, we haven't had to line anything up, if that makes sense. Now I'm gonna stick my first image down, around the edge, flat, down with glue. This looks lovely with the with an oval, with a circle. They all look really nice, it doesn't matter how you do it, they still look lovely. And we're going to line that up. And pop that down. So that's been stuck down flat. I'm gonna take my other two pieces, now you need both pieces for this. And I'm gonna line them, that one up, where it would fit on the frame. And then again on the center piece, we're going to go down flat. And that's why I say you need this one. Sorry, you're getting my head in this as well. Because you need to make sure you get it in the center. And stick that down. And then on the back of this one, I've put foam dots, foam squares, rectangles, whatever you've got. You do need quite a few on here to make this stable. But it's actually, as you can see, quite a nice quick card to do. And depending on how thick your foam is on here, it's a, a good cheap, it's quite a cheap card to post as well, which is quite important at the moment. And then we'll line that up there. So there we have our finished card. I've needed another dot just in there. Look, it's starting to sink down. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a wiggle. So hopefully that answers all the questions that everybody asks us at the shows. That's probably quite, again there, I probably could have done with another dot in there just to lift that. So our center piece and our outside edge are completely stuck down flat. The middle frame has been raised on foam pads. If you wanted to raise it up even higher, just double up your foam pads and that will give you a, a higher um, raise on your frame. So I thought I would share a few more cards with you. Actually, maybe we'll just quickly run through what we've used again first so that you know um, we have used color-wise Shabby Shutter, Peacock Feathers and Scattered Straw. We've used Crystal Clear Embossing Powder. I'm trying to find what... Ah, there they are. <laughs> I put them somewhere safe. And we have used Butterfly Wishes and Blooming Flourishes Stamp Set and our Sticky Glue and the black Onyx Black Versafine Ink. Just regular paintbrushes. These were just a... I think we've got these on the website for... Six, six or seven ninety nine for ten different brushes. They don't have to be anything special, just regular paint brushes. Um, so I'll show you a couple more samples of this particular stamp. So this one is using our Celebration Small Stamp and the Blooming Flourishes off to a different on a different angle, which I think looks really effective. It's not an angle I often use, but I quite like it like that. This was is the card that everybody sees on our um, show boards. So you can see how it, the middle frame is lifted slightly higher than the one that I've done, slightly thicker foam pads underneath. That's all that does for that one. Um, and then we've got it in another colorway. I quite like it in the yellow, a little bit different. And then we also have this one. Um, and I think this one was done by Karen from our design team. And she used multiple colors on there to color it in. And then on the background, she's used just the um, larger flower and just done that uh, I think I believe she's brushed over it with oxides and the different sentiments that she's used on there as well so I've got a couple of the different sentiments we use uh, bear with me a second I'm just trying to get everything back in so that I can show you there we go so let me pop these out of the way for a second. So we do have lots of different sentiments. So we've got hopeful and happy quotes, which is a really nice one. Every summer has a story and won't ours this year. Hey, everybody. Believe in yourself and you will be unstoppable. 
those to whoever reads this, I hope something good happens to you today. Be true to others, but most of all, be true to yourself. Whatever you decide to do, make sure it makes you happy. Then we have got be what you want to be. Don't worry, be happy. Believe in yourself. Be yourself. Happy be day. Be happy in um, a slightly different font. Uh, be creative. Busy be. Be mine. Be good and be whatever you want to be. Then we've got a couple of the tiny little bees on here as well. Can you see those? And, obvious, and then a little flower as well. Another set we have, which is one of our most popular ones, we have our birthday sentiment set, which says, happy birthday to you. A birthday wish is sent to you, hoping, you all have a, hoping you'll have a wonderful day. Happy birthday, may, your, may today be the start of a wonderful year. May your birthday be as special as you. Wishing you the best on your special day. And that's the one that I believe Karen used on that particular card. Um, wishing you the best on your special day. Then you've got a couple of little butterflies. And then another little flourishy leafy swirl thing there as well. Then we have life events which says happy birthday. Birthday wishes to a special friend. Um, thank you with love. Uh, new bundle of joy on your wedding day. Happy anniversary and congratulations. Dream sentiments. A dream is a wish your heart makes. Some see a weed, some see a, see a wish. Thank you, scatter kindness, which we all need to do a little bit more of sometimes. Dreams come true just because turn your can't into can and your cans, your cans into plans. And then two more sets that we have here, just in case it's, um, it says, thinking of you, feel better soon. Just a little note, new home with sympathy, with love, good luck, celebration, congratulations on the arrival of your baby. Um, a tiny little handmaid in there, um, and when I say tiny, it is a little one. Can you see that? There we go, handmaid, and then the thank you. And then last but not least is one of our wine sentiments. I think this card would look really effective if you, we did it with the, um, we have a range called a bottle of vine stamp set, and this these stamps go really well with that, but I think just as something a little bit different. Age and glasses of wine should never be counted. Wine a little, laugh a lot, to-do list, open bottle, pour bottle, drink wine, or sorry, open bottle, pour wine, drink wine, repeat. Um, the only decision, decision you need to make is a bottle or a glass and the best wines are the ones drunk with family and friends. So that's just a few different samples, uh, different sentiments that we have. Um, I'm hoping, oh, sorry, you got my hand right in the middle of that. I um, hope you've all enjoyed the uh, video and we will be back with some more later on in the week. Thanks ever so much. Bye.